This is video podcast 48 from learningradiology.com. Good calls or pitfalls? Recognizing the good from the ugly. Hello, I'm William Herring from Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. So in this video podcast, there are going to be about a dozen cases in which the finding will be pointed out to you. Pause your computer or MP3 player and decide whether the interpretation is accurate, a good call, or inaccurate, a pitfall. Let's see how it works. This is the first case. This is a 61-year-old with a cough. On the frontal chest x-ray, the observer noted these two areas of increased density. The interpretation was bilateral lower lobe pneumonia. Good call or pitfall? Pitfall. Those two areas actually represent epicardial fat pads, a collection of fat on the outside of the heart, more frequently seen in more obese individuals than thinner individuals which is visible on the left side of the heart in the area where the red arrow is demonstrating it, and sometimes at the right cardiophrenic angle, as it is in this person, where the other red arrow is pointing to the fat pad. You'll notice that they do not obscure or silhouette the hemidiaphragms because their fat density and the diaphragm and the contents below the diaphragm are soft tissue density. On this coronally reformatted CT scan, the red arrows are pointing to the fat density adjacent to the heart. Here is another example of a patient with epicardial fat pads, one at the right cardiophrenic angle and the other on the apex of the heart. Here is your next case. This is a two-year-old who is wheezing. The observer noted this soft tissue mass that was projecting into the pharynx and was worried about a pharyngeal mass. Is that a good call or a pitfall? Pause your computer or MP3 player. It's a pitfall. Actually, the mass is the patient's ear lobe, to be exact. Depending on the size of the ear and the projection, the ear lobe will project into the pharynx. It is not a mass in the pharynx. All of the edges are surrounded by air, and this is a pitfall to avoid. Here's your next case. This is a frontal chest x-ray on a 47-year-old who was stabbed several times in the chest. The observer noted these lucencies on either side of the chest and was concerned about bilateral pneumothoraces. Is that a good call or a pitfall? It's a pitfall. Those actually represent the outer edges of the patient's breast. A visceral pleural white line will appear as a very thin white line about the thickness of a sharpened pencil point, whereas soft tissue margins like the edges of the breast or skin folds will appear as edges much thicker than the visceral pleural white line. Here's your next case. This is a one-month-old who was brought to the emergency room with cough and fever. This is a frontal chest radiograph. The observer was concerned about this density and called it a right upper lobe pneumonia. Is that a good call or a pitfall? That's a pitfall. That's the thymus gland. The normal thymus gland is soft and mushy, and where it abuts the minor fissure, you can see that the gland is indented by the fissure. On the other side, where the white arrow is, you can see the left lobe of the thymus gland. It's easy to mistake the thymus for an area of consolidation in the lung, but some of the clues are the lobulated border, the interface that it makes with the minor fissure on the right side, the fact that it doesn't extend all the way out to the periphery of the lung on either side. This is the next case. It's a 68-year-old with weight loss. This is a frontal chest radiograph. The observer noted a hazy density in the left hemithorax and was worried about the possibility of atelectasis. Is that a good call or a pitfall? That's a good call. That hazy density over the left hemithorax, especially surrounding the left hilum, is characteristic of left upper lobe atelectasis. 
On the lateral image, the red arrows are pointing to the edge created by the major fissure, which is displaced anteriorly because of volume loss in the left upper lobe. This patient had an underlying bronchogenic carcinoma that was shown on a CT scan. Here's your next case. It's a 56-year-old who came to the emergency department short of breath. The observer noted at the left costophrenic angle there was blunting and was worried about a small left pleural effusion. Is that a good call or is this a pitfall? That's a pitfall. This patient is markedly over-aerated. He has chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, specifically emphysema. And when the lungs become this over-aerated, you begin to be able to see the individual muscle slips as they insert on the ribs. When the diaphragm becomes almost inverted, you actually can see the lateral muscle slips and the meniscus-like shape that we see in the left costophrenic angle is actually a muscle slip of the diaphragm inserting on the rib, not a pleural effusion. You should suspect that this blunting does not represent a pleural effusion in someone whose diaphragm is as flat as this or is actually inverted. Here's your next case. This is a 57-year-old who had hemoptysis. The observer noted a mass superimposed on the left lung and was worried about a bronchogenic carcinoma. Is that a good call or is there a pitfall? Well, there's a pitfall. This mass exhibits something called the incomplete rim sign. You'll notice that a portion of the mass is extremely well marginated, and that's the portion that abuts air, whether it's air in the room or air in the lung, while another portion of the mass is fuzzy and indistinct. That's the incomplete portion of the incomplete rim sign, and that's where this mass is attached to something. It's attached either to the inner chest wall, projecting into the lung, or it's attached to the outer chest wall and projecting into the atmosphere. And in fact, when you see the incomplete rim sign, it should make you suspicious that whatever you're looking at is actually on the patient's skin. So when they went back to re-examine this patient, they discovered that there was a large mole on the patient's back that was producing the mass that we saw on the frontal chest x-ray. Here's your next case. This is an 87-year-old who came in with a dry cough. Uh, the observer couldn't help but notice that there were these lucencies in the right upper lobe and was worried about cavitation, perhaps from TB. Is that a good call or is this a pitfall? Well, if you look very carefully at those so-called cavities, you can see they're extremely symmetrical in shape. In fact, they're all the same size, too, and they're far too circular to represent naturally occurring cavities. In fact, this represents a ping-pong ball plumbage, which is a treatment that used to be used many years ago for tuberculosis. It was thought that if the lung was put at rest, that it would produce conditions in the lung that would be detrimental to the further growth of TB. This was before INH and anti-tuberculous drugs. And so for some individuals, they had these, not ping-pong balls literally, but lucite balls that were inserted usually into the upper lobe on one side or the other. They have a characteristic appearance that you see here on this radiograph, and they represent an old treatment for tuberculosis. Here's your next case. This is a 42-year-old who came into the emergency room with a fever. The observer noted that there was increased density where the red arrow is, which seemed to be obscuring the right heart border and thought this patient had a right middle lobe pneumonia. Good call or pitfall? Well, it's a pitfall. If you look on this individual's lateral chest radiograph, you see that they have a deformity of the lower sternum, which is a pectus excavatum deformity. That is compressing the heart against the spine, producing the picture that we see on the frontal radiograph, which is that we don't see the right heart border well because it's being compressed and moved over to the left a bit. A clue on the frontal chest x-ray that there is a pectus excavatum deformity is that the ribs are oriented steeply downward. 
This patient came into the emergency room following an automobile accident and was complaining of neck pain. This is an open mouth view of the odontoid. The observer noticed that lucency at the base of the odontoid and was concerned about a fracture of the base of the dens. Good call or pitfall? Well, that's a pitfall. That lucency represents something called a mock line or a mock band. Mock bands are caused by density changes between adjacent areas on radiographs. They're actually produced by limitations in our retinas to process these differences in density. And the lines actually are not present on the original image. They are produced by our visual apparatus. A very common location for a mock line is the base of the dens, usually caused by the occipital bone posteriorly. So it's time for your mini quiz. This is a 54 year old who came into the emergency department with stiffness in the shoulder. This is a frontal radiograph which the observer who saw was worried about some form of dystrophic calcification in the soft tissues. Is that a good call or is this a pitfall? Well, it's a pitfall. What you're actually looking at is underarm antiperspirant. Antiperspirants that contain aluminum, specifically aluminum chloride, aluminum fluorohydrate, and aluminum zirconium compounds will produce visible densities in the axilla on conventional radiographs. It's one of the reasons why women who are to undergo mammography are asked not to use underarm antiperspirants or powder so that artifacts are not produced on the mammogram. Be aware that there might be an artifact produced by antiperspirant the next time you look at a shoulder.